right, so here's the XHP 70.2, which is the upgraded version from the original, which is one of these right here. And I bought this um, on a 12 volt heat sink. And the plan was originally to just drive it from a buck driver like this, um, running at about 12 volts and get some type of handy work light going. But I realized I could pretty much get about the same results from something like this, um, which is just same deal using a, uh, it's actually using a boost driver to run a higher voltage LED board. And <clears throat> since I had it, I decided to use this type deal instead using a, uh, thermal switch on there that will cut the fan on when it gets too hot um, but I can use 12 volt a 12 volt bank with the boost converter for this running no problem and um, it happens to work out because that converter will no longer run when it gets down to about 10 volts it just worked out better that way um, with the 12 volt emitter I was planning on using one of these um, the only problem is I would probably need to run it from about four cells in series uh, using a buck driver. That way I could actually push the full forward voltage and the amperage needed to uh, get it all the way bright. So what I ended up doing was realizing I could convert that over back to six volts, which is probably what I should have ordered it as to begin with. Now, luckily for me, I bought a... Uh sync pad 2 from mountain electronics which is a great vendor and that actual sync pad uh, comes with the ability to switch this around to run from 6 volts or 12 volts so it came uh, at 12 volts which had this little resistor here zero ohm resistor which is right here that I plucked off and that was basically just serving as a jumper between these two points. When you jump those two points together, then it runs off 12 volts. If you remove that resistor, and there's these two little solder points marked with a J, and I kind of just kind of crappily soldered those together, took off the resistor, and now this will run from 6 volts. So I'll be able to use it in this guy. But I had this one in there swapped it out with the new one and um, essentially the main difference is let's see if I can get down in there they've just got the four emitters on there grouped together a little tighter it's kind of hard to tell but essentially they're they're a little closer together than on on the uh, first version it basically just makes a shitty beam whereas with this new improved one it, it works out much better so let's kind of show a little view of the beam really hard to tell it's really too bright but what you don't see is that little donut hole artifact that used to be in the middle so it's it's much more similar to a, a stock with a single LED now, except obviously it's the beam is not going to have as tight of a hot spot because instead of one emitter you've got these four. Um, but this was in 4K. Um, I think it's a it's a pretty big improvement, so it was worth swapping it out. I can reuse this, which has been guinea pigged up pretty bad. I can reuse this for something else now. But I had to put the same little plastic divider donut shaped deal around there again to prevent it from shorting out. Um, it's just something that I haven't figured a way around. Likewise, <clears throat> you're not going to get away with shitty solder, a, a shitty solder job like that. Um, what I often do is. Uh, go wet it afterwards with a file something like this take like the, the thin edge right here and just kinda shave it down as much as I can 
that way once I put the little plastic donut piece around there it'll actually snug down well enough now this is not a hundred percent all the way tightened down it, but it's it's tight enough it's not going to come loose it's not shaking and the, the beam still looks pretty good so yeah XHP 70.2 pretty good deal